Sunset is slowly changes tonight as we sit in silence, both searching for something to say. Would it really be that bad? Uh, yeah, I didn't think about it like that, but Misha's right. Body's set a mood and it would be a sad one. Sad body doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun. Why would it be sad? Is it a trick question? I'm sure of it. Shidane's eyes pierce into mine, waiting for a man so a bit detached, an electrical stare that I haven't seen in a while, but feels familiar anyway. I consider my answer carefully, but also what it means for her to ask me. It could be that Shizune finds it depressing as well, or it could be that she doesn't understand why anyone would find it depressing. Both are equally plausible. I had a thought that when you graduate, that's it. It's gonna be the end of the student council. I was wondering if you had the same idea. Don't be stupid. I look forward to it. I won't be a student anymore, so the expectations are going to be completely different. People's expectations of me and my expectations of everything else. It seems exciting. <laughs> oh, it sounds exciting, does it, Shizune? You know? It's like... Well, it seems like a typical thing people say, really. It's like with people, it's like, I can't wait to grow up and graduate from school and go around into the other world and find out it's you know, really pretty disappointing. Shit! As for the student council, it should be in good enough hands. I don't have anything to be sad about. I don't think you're being honest. You looked upset about having to give the student council up not even a few weeks ago. It wasn't about leaving it to a bunch of newbies either. It was having to stop doing student council work at all. Unexpectedly, she's in his mouth. So you're not disagreeing? Then it doesn't make sense. Why would you want to have a party about it? I'm trying to get over it. Besides, goodbye celebrations are very important. People say the first step in the, is the most crucial, but following it through and finishing cleanly are just as important, right? I guess that is right. True, I mean. Anyway, I don't consider it goodbye, but it's still an event. You still have to go through the proper motions. Aren't you going to? Aren't I going to what? Kiss me, of course. Is that the proper motions? It would be normal, wouldn't it? The natural thing to do. It's time to act decisively. If I don't, I'm sure my heart will explode. I kiss her immediately, so quickly that I don't even have time to enjoy it, even though she was prepared for it. She today blushes a deep red. I feel similar heat rising in my neck and cheeks. They're gonna get it on in the student council. Oh, I didn't do the high pitch bit there. Did it? <laughs> oh man. Look at the way his sounds ass sticks out there. It's just <laughs> how distracting. I move in for another kiss, but as I do so, she moves backwards at the same time and impishly jumps on the cabinet behind her. <laughs> wow, that annoyed me, that did. That freaking pop up is like, oh, you know, uh, to, uh, mm, properly install these uh, updates here. Yeah? Um, um, you have to restart your laptop. Fuck you! I did that like 700 fucking times earlier! And that wasn't even that long ago! But anyway, where was I? Coming behind her alone in the total silence of the room. We just look at each other for a while. Then Misha enters the room. This time I kiss her more deeply. Her lips are light and dry and open a tiny bit. I am only able to appreciate the sensation for a moment before she starts kissing me back forcefully. Well, it looks better drawn than quite a number of kisses, CGs I've seen in visual novels. Remember the ones in Clannads? I don't know if there was a... S well, yeah, there was. Well, it still looked a bit awkward, but remember that one with Katomi? I mean, the freaking CG just looked really awkward. Her bangs brush against my closed eyelids as I let myself sink deeper into the kiss. I can feel the shape of her body through her clothes, which only makes me hold she's in a tighter. It takes some effort for the both of us to draw back from each other. We're both flushing, both from the kiss and thoughts of what's to come, and I'm far from the only one breathing a little heavier. It's going to lead into one of those scenes, but how long is it going to take? I mean, imagine if Misha shows up, that would be even more awkward. Especially after, you know, all that's been revealed. As she then begins to take off my tie, I start undoing her blouse. It takes a while to figure it out. I'd never really thought about how our school does work before. 
This bow's a little tight on her, you know what? This has absolutely nothing to do with the plot. Wait. Because of it, I find myself peeling it off of her, although with the way she's trying to wriggle out of it at the same time, it isn't easy. The sight is a little comical. The scene is a little off screen. Off screening! <laughs> okay. What? I try to think of a good answer, but it isn't easy. How would I be able to respond to that even if I could? There's no way to, unless I were to say that bureaucracy really puts me in the mood. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing, isn't it? Okay, what did you say before that? Why are you bolted today then on the roof, or in your room? Bureaucracy is the answer! Okay... I'm obviously going to have to freaking, you know, change the angle, but my god, look at Chizune's face, man. Those eyes. It sounds like, oh my god, I didn't know you were this assertive. Also, that ass. Also, off screening. Wait, what? Actually, I hurl back a sigh as Chizune victoriously holds herself above me. She's won again. It's like, look at that face. Seriously. Is that a notable dialogue then? I'll on screen, but I can't on screen the full screen because, uh, well, she hasn't got a bra on. Also, her boobs are a lot bigger than I thought they were. Random. Off screen. Wait, what? I'm distracted until Shizuni's bra falls on me, seeming like it dropped out of the sky. I end up laughing despite how hard I try not to. And it's contagious enough that Shizuni starts as well. Too as well. What the hell? The CG didn't have her bra on, man. Bit delayed. Freed from her breasts, her- oh my god, even he thinks that. Her breasts are larger than I thought. Even though they were noticeably large through her shirt already, she picks up her bra with her fingers and flicks it off as my ha hands move over her body. <laughs> oh man, she says earlier you just like- It reminds me partially of Emmy, but even more assertive. Okay, Shizune says, I should just stop now and leave you stewing in your lust. She's, she's even teasing him in this situation. She says as she starts, <laughs> cause me to blink at the sudden, <laughs> well, pleasure, I can say that at least. Very funny, Shizune. I soon lose track of my thoughts. What? Shizune bites her lip to muffle her voice from coming out, an unwanted voice. This is the most I've ever heard of it, and she blushes once she realizes she let it slip out. So again, even though she's deaf, she can, you know, make, you know, sounds. I wonder if someone who is actually, you know, deaf, like, born deaf, can actually learn to, you know, speak. I wonder if that's even possible, because they can make noise, but they can't speak. I mean, they wouldn't be able to understand that, really, would they? I wonder if it's possible for that, I don't know. To cover it up, she drives herself against me harder, causing me to jolt against her, driving my... <laughs> I thrust my hips towards her at the sudden sensation of movement, and she fights against me, trying to... Interruption? You know, it's moments like that that I feel glad that I don't freaking record at the laptop. Wait, at the desk. Because it would be facing in a way that when my dad opened the door there, to just hand over this random... Solero here, he would just be like, well, he wouldn't say a thing, really. He's pretty casual about that. I mean, this one time, my sister and her friends walked through the door and he had porn playing on his laptop, just right facing the door. He's like, what the fuck, man? Zero fucks given? What the fuck? But anyways, trying to pin me back down when I managed to pull my arms out from under me. In that moment, her hips thrust back with even greater force in response. Why am I reading this? The sound of Shizidi's soft, restrained bones, and the sight of her bountiful breasts moving up and down each time her hips buckle against mine, grow more arousing with time in the stillness of the student council room. Then she makes, you know, traditional sex sounds like, like hmm, 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 and stuff. I almost can't take it anymore. The pleasurable sensations welling up between my legs, multiplied by the pressure of Sude's weight on top of me, make it hard for me to think. My hips start working by themselves. Sude's hands push mine down onto the table. Every motion of hers is the push of some kind. The table under us rattles under our combined weights. I doubt it would collapse, but the noise is really something. 
What if, like, someone's patrolling the school, man? <laughs> Just, like, walks by the hallway and hears. Not that Shizune notices, her pace suddenly grows faster until it feels as though she might shove me across the table with how forceful she's being. But warning, her movements come to a final crescendo. Suddenly she stops so much full on top of me with enough speed that if she didn't catch herself, it'd probably have knocked us unconscious. Worst situation possible. If someone happened to walk in while we were knocked out. I'm surprised, but not enough to forget that we're both naked and the sudden, painful interruption that just happened. Why did this have to happen? Was it intentional to leave me stewing in my own lust? So they lets out her breath sheepishly, realizing it at the same time as I do. Sorry, I tripped or slipped or something like that. I had a thought. Is the door unlocked? She quickly gets up the table and bolts over the check and locks it, unlocks it, and locks it again. Pull on love just to make sure. When she's finally sure, she makes an out of place motion with her hands. Safe. I'm glad you can take things so lightly. I don't. Uh, I didn't do it on purpose. Why don't you take the lead then? Come on. She had a lustful look in her eyes there for a second. I grabbed Shizune by the shoulders and tried to put her onto the table instead. Her brow scrunches in displeasure as the edge of the table pokes her in the back, just as it did to me. She opts to help herself up onto it. This is also the first time I've seen Shizune lying down unclothed. The contours of her collarbone and breasts are beautiful, and my eyes fold them down to her shapely hips, a delicate hourglass, hourglass figure. You know, they're right by a window, right? I mean, what is it on the first floor? If it's on the first floor, what if someone's just... Uh, what if it was Kenji just strolling around to like that one time and he's just like, What the hell? He's just like, suddenly my eyesight's improved! I run my hands along the curve of her body from her shoulders on down. I slowly insert myself into blah blah blah, an intense warmth and blah 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 immediately surround me. I start yeah, fizzling into her to pick up where we left off before. Oh wait, that was meant to be a blah 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 moment. But it feels so hot against my skin each time, my hips blah 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 blah. Why am I still reading this? <laughs> blah 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 Oh, now he's doing the teasing, is he? And I carefully tease her with my hand as well. <laughs> Wait, he's almost lost his balance. Now he's fondling the boobs. All too soon. Ah, oh, the music ends as well as the feeling. The feeling ends. All I can do afterwards is stay. Blah 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 blah. Holding hands or something, table, both for lack of energy and because blah 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 blah. For Zuri's part, she smiles almost dreamily. The sight makes me smile as well. Her legs slowly fall, allowing me to extract myself. I mean, blah 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 blah. <laughs> Exhausted, I lean back against the desk and try to regain my breath before putting my clothes back on. I notice a dull, hot throbbing in my chest as I button my shirt back up. It puts a bad aftertaste on everything that just happened. It was a lucky break that Misha couldn't be here, wasn't it? What? You're in an unusually joking mood today. I wonder what she had to do. Zuni traces the air lazily with a finger and points to the door. Go see for yourself. Why don't you just tell me? It's more interesting if you see for yourself. Seeing is believing. Sure, clever. Maybe I will. What about you? You gonna stay here all day? It's getting late. It feels like my last day of student council president, so maybe I'll sleep here tonight. It could be the last chance I have to sleep at my desk. Like after a long day trying to meet a deadline. Well, at least get changed. That's weird. I'll sleep in my bed. Sleeping sin up is a skill. A very useful one. Right. Well, I suppose it would be. Imagine sleeping on a plane. For a moment after I leave the room, I actually do consider seeing what Misha is up to, just because Shizune made it sound so secretive, as if she were building a time machine or something. But in the end, I decide not to. The night air is pleasant at this time of year. It's refreshing and a little humid, but not so chilly as to make it uncomfortable to stay outside for a while. 
It's late enough for the courtyard to be all but deserted too. After Zuna and I said our farewells to each other, I'd set out to return to my dormitory room. I didn't even make it all the way there, though, before getting distracted. It doesn't seem like a bad idea to go see what Misha's up to. I have nothing better to do, no homework, I'm not out, I'm out of anything worth reading. On top of that, I simply want to know. This is my first time being in the main building after hours, but usually it says I'm leaving the place for Shizune and Misha after a long day at the student council, not entering, yeah, not entering alone. The atmosphere is quiet, a word I would not normally use to describe these halls. It's a little creepy. A light starts flickering up ahead. Seems like a horror movie moment waiting to happen. Feeling a hand on my shoulder, I stiffen reflectively. It's not Misha, or else there uh, would be hands clamped over my eyes and a sing-song Guess Who accompanying them. So who is it? I hope it's not Kenji, or at least that it's someone I know, or this will take a turn for the weird. Oh, it's Shizune. Whoever it is quickly slips in front of me. It's Shizune. What are you doing here? I'm so relieved that I forget to sign it. Shizune puts a finger up to her lips. I guess even though she can't hear it, she has some idea of what loudness is, and can't tell from my expression, and can, I mean, that I was being loud, and apparently being loud isn't a good thing right now. But then, why is Misha her interpreter? Oh, very funny. Why are you here? I was waiting for you to come here, uh, come see. I know you would. I knew you would show up. It took you a while, though. You've been waiting here? Yes, but that isn't important. We have to be stealthy if we don't want Misha to detect us. Tell me if I'm not being stealthy enough, okay? With that, Shizune starts slowly tiptoeing through the middle of the hall. I pat her on the shoulder to get her attention. That's not stealthy. Why do we have to be stealthy? She refused to answer, probably because signing and walking stealthily at the same time doesn't look easy. Before I know it, we're in front of our homeroom. Suddenly a sound like the crack of a whip pierces the air, followed by a familiar expression of frustration. I'm sure a sound like that isn't good for my heart, not to mention everything sounds about a million times louder than how, with how silent it is. Come from inside the room, and I settle up to sit in to get a look inside. Huh? What? Can you stop throwing your pencil, please? How do you even throw a pencil that loudly? What? Oh my god, I just realized... This is the first and possibly even only, for all I know, CG with Muto in there. He looks very flustered. What understatement. I sympathize with Muto. I was able to hear Misha's pen break the sound barrier even through a wall and a thick classroom door. It probably blew out his eardrums and left an imprint on the wall. I'm not throwing it when I, uh, when, uh, when I get nervous. I let it spin around, but then I've got to hold on to it, and... It doesn't matter. Either way, that doesn't. Uh, there shouldn't be pencils lying around. I get enough of that during regular school hours. I don't need it after hours. Uh, right, sorry. Whatever, just stop throwing, or releasing, or dropping these. Please. Teachers have work too. I know Shizune watching the same scene I am. Mido is yelling at the top of his lungs, and Misha is being Misha. Okay, I should be speaking these lines louder then. I could hear them reasonably well through the door, but Shizune obviously can't hear anything at all. So I wonder what watching this is like for her. She must know, since she understands well enough to want to see it too. But I have to wonder if she ever feels like she's missing out on something, having to work that much harder to understand what she's observing. Looks like she's taking supplementary lessons, is she? Yep. I answer, despite knowing the question is completely rhetorical. Misha told me she really wants to be a sign language teacher in the future. If she can get a recommendation, she can study overseas for it. That's why she's working so hard. The grades were always kind of on the low side. Why is it always that, isn't it? You know, study overseas. It's like, you know, isn't Japan supposed to have a really great education system? It's like, no, you have to go overseas for that. Now I feel guilty. I haven't even, uh, I haven't even thought about what I'm going to do yet. Not have I. The cheerful way that she signs is very unlike her and is obviously false. Also, just remember the Solero. That's going to freaking melt. Let's get out of here. We don't have to be seen. It would be a problem if we were caught standing out here like idiots. Where? Student council room? Again? Shaking her head, she slips into the classroom across the hall instead. Great hiding place. Sarcasm. You're unusually sarcastic lately. With the door closed, it's a good one. Anyway, wasn't it interesting? Now if it was me, you're saying you're unusually sarcastic today, you'd be like, what? 
Well, lately, it's like, I'm always sarcastic, man! Well, not always, but you get the idea. I have a sarcastic sense of humor. I remember, like, I, like, had these therapy sessions a while, quite a while back, and I remember each time I'd go there, I was like, the sarcastic side of me would always come out, and I'd just be like, oh, God, there's time and a place for sarcasm, but for fuck's sake, focus and all that, you know? But sarcasm, it's like, I don't know, it's like a reflective kind of thing, just like, Someone says something, sarcastic reply already. Yes, but I am not really surprised. I close the door behind us, prompt and Sunia laughs soundlessly as she slides into a chair. For a second it depressed me. I want to hear her real laugh. You know, what scene? Sneaking mission. Let's save here. Go back to the main menu. I want to see how many scenes are left, if this is the last one or not. There's another one after this, shit. Well, you know what? I'm gonna load. I'm gonna have the Solero. And I will be right back. Alright, let's continue. I can lose the band, it's not the shit in your life. I can lose the side of your chair for a second. I want to hear a real laugh. I was. I've been looking down on Misha. I didn't think she had a call at all. But it turns out that I was wrong. I made a careless assumption. I thought Misha was as aimless as I was. I was stupid. I lost. Sunny pauses to crack her knuckles, then throws her hands over each other, and leans forward in her chair, in the abnormal quiet of the building. I can hear Muto yelling at Misha again, even across the hallway and through two doors. She's in his eyes all on mine and behind the gleaming lenses of her glass she is observing my reaction to her words Sorry, I, I always have to have to sing into the along to that. This is a test. Her opinion of people is rarely formed from how they respond to questions. It's how they respond to statements that counts. In hindsight, it makes sense. Suno's inability to speak, as well as just her personality in general, means that anything she says is a big commitment on her part. Everything. For that reason, I sometimes doubt she says anything without a hidden agenda behind it. That sounds remarkably paranoid. Even Kenji would think so. Unfortunately, I'm so caught up in thinking about it that I forget to give her an answer. She takes it as there not being one. There was an invisible time limit to this test, shorter than usual. Just as I thought. What do you mean? You don't agree. Not really, it's not that. I don't get it. I want to force my will on you. How refreshingly honest. Don't give me a weird look like that. It's not like that was always my intention. At first I was just bored. I wanted to see someone's passion for something, so that I could try and beat them. I wanted to test their ability for their convictions. But it was impossible. No one has any passion for anything in the school. They just want to keep to themselves. I can't believe it. It's too boring that way. I thought that there was no way these strap people could be for real. It goes beyond not wanting to make waves. They had to have some interest. They had to be hiding something. I want to expose it and reveal it and drag it out. One of the most successful ways to get people to open up to you and cheer them up is to open up with a story about yourself. And then you erase them, uh, ease them, I mean, into telling you about themselves. It's like give and take, but with an element of manipulation, which makes it interesting. I can't do that. If I attempt to have Misha talk about me, for me, it makes me seem arrogant. The message has to go through a messenger. I'm standing next to Misha, telling her to tell someone about me. You don't have to be able to read sign language to see that. If I were forced to sit through that, I would think I was arrogant too. I was frustrated. I couldn't figure out a way to have a conversation with anyone but Misha. No one would open up to me. I came to the conclusion that I can't make people confide in me or believe in me. I can only hope to create things and show them to people, and hope they make them happy. Hope uh, they make me happy. Or I could be more forceful and hope it would eventually stick to someone. I guess that would be me. Feeling it was vaguely depressing. 
Somewhere along the line, I think I started to ignore Misha or see her as less of a person, or something like that. I took her for granted, I think would be the best way to put it. It's like she was just an extension of myself. I forgot that the whole time. Misha was there, opening up to me and giving a hundred percent every day. I missed what I was looking for because it was in plain sight. That was stupid of me. I really did become arrogant. That's why I've lost. I'm more short-sighted than I was back then. I went in reverse. She's pacing back and forth now, almost brooding, yet still filled with so much energy that she can't stand to stop moving. If you got her to hold two wires, I'm sure she's in a good power light bulb. It's odd that I could have such a light-hearted thought while she's being so serious. And in spite of that, Misha tells me that I'm her inspiration. Isn't that ridiculous? I'm not the kind of person who can inspire others. Even if a person who inspires you is flawed, it can be acceptable. I've thought about this. There is even acceptable hypocrisy. For instance, if your hero, hero was an athlete but unsportsmanlike, they could still be respected for their athletic ability, even if they had shortcomings as a person. However, she snaps her fingers briskly, sounds like a thunderclap in the empty room, and she's in it takes a few seconds to stretch her fingers. Come to think of it, this is the most she has ever signed. If someone like me has no goals, it would be totally unacceptable. It would be the worst kind of hypocrisy. And hypocrites don't deserve responsibility over anything. They can't even manage themselves. How incredibly pessimistic. It makes me angry to think about it. I would hate myself just a few months ago. This must be how I look dollars. And funny enough, it was Cecilia and Misha who convinced me to stop. Without them, I'm sure things would be much different. And not for the better. Lately, I feel as though we pass around our miseries as much as we're supported by each other. But I think it just comes with the territory of having friends and being close to someone. You're the leader anyway. That's only because no one else wants to be. But that means you still are, since people are putting their trust in you anyway. In fact, doesn't that make it more important? Either way, you are the leader, you are the inspirational figure, or whatever you want to call it. You're responsible for what you did. I read that in a book somewhere. That's clever. She only seems to show what she's feeling on her face when she wants to, but I don't think she's being sarcastic. I don't want to tame anyone, though. Being the leader and being looked up to, then, same thing. I never wanted to be the leader. It just ends up that way. I don't believe that. All you do is try to grab more and more responsibility. Wait, wait. I wasn't going to tell you that I didn't enjoy it. I don't care about being the leader, but I don't mind. I don't care about being the best, but I don't mind. You're right, though, about me wanting responsibility. Of course I want more responsibility. Having responsibility makes me feel alive. That's why I joined the student council. If there's no pressure, I just can't stand it. Polar opposite of me, I can't handle too much pressure. I'm more like Hanako, really, in that regard. Too much pressure, uh, freaking overloads. It's, that's the thing, man. Everyone's different. You can't really expect everyone to kind of like... It's like when like someone does something, and another person fails at you, it's like, oh, come on, anyone can do that. I mean, I'm able to do it. Just because you are doesn't mean everyone's going to be able to do that. Same way, or act the same way to similar situations. Everyone reacts differently, everyone thinks differently. We just have similarities, but never 100% difference. That's the same, I mean. I screwed that up, didn't I? Uh, even so, now I'm the leader. I always thought being the leader meant you give orders, but it really is more. It's about having a goal. If I don't have a goal, then it's pointless. People would only be following me for my own enjoyment. It would be selfish. The strangely moral viewpoint for a person who seems to love one-upping all so much. Resting her chin on her tented finger, she today looks disarmingly childish as she thinks hard about her problem. The expression on her face is a little comical, because it's too obvious and therefore very unlike her. Comes with a job, I think you'd have to be a leader. Uh, you wouldn't be satisfied with anything else, you would just get bored. Soon he doesn't reply, but from her annoyed expression, I think I've guessed correctly. I've been thinking that I need a little direction too. Were you told that it's important to contribute to society? One unusual response, it's so out of nowhere that I don't know how to respond. And it also bothers me, though I don't know why. Possibly because it doesn't seem like something that would come from her. So I start to think that it isn't Suzune's fault at all. I wonder who told her that. Well, it's probably her dad. So there's a chance that she came up with it on her own. So, would it be because she can't hear? 
And that is a thing that always bugs me. It's like, oh, you know, everyone's got to contribute to society. In what way? And it just seems to translate as, work, you lazy bastards. Work your whole life and then die. Die in the gutter, you bastard. I know, maybe that's just my cynical, pessimistic side. But I hate it. Why do you say that? Just because. I don't believe it. Uh, I guess that's right, though. I see. I don't know if it's the same for me. I hate it. I think everyone wants a purpose. Looking back, it makes sense that Shizune doesn't have one. All that NG would otherwise have been directed at something. Since she had nothing to channel it towards, Shizune lashed out in all directions. Reminds me of a down power line flailing in a storm. Furious uh, and inconsistent, or whatever. But aimless and dangerous, just like Shizune. I want to say that this is why she feels the need to uh, turn everything into a competition. That's probably just how she is. Having the goal to put that energy towards is just the next level. It kind of reminds me of a thought I had, like, kind of like, I don't know how to describe it, poetic kind of thing, I don't know. Uh, how, how did I word it? Something like a bird, essentially, like, you know? Like, it was originally a thought of this, like, you know, when you, like, get to a point where you move out, you get your own place and all that, and like, you do your own thing, you go for independence and all that shit, and I thought, like, uh, a bird that never leaves his nest, never learns how to fly, and then, I later on, added to that by adding, but without direction it flies aimlessly. Kind of poetic feel to it, isn't it? But that's how it is, isn't it? It's like, yeah, step one. You leave the nest and then you're like, ah, oh, fuck, what do I want to do here? What am I going for? Then you just go around aimlessly until you're like, ah, oh, I know what I want to do now, and you've got direction. Something like that. How about this? I could go into business. My family is well connected, so it shouldn't be too hard. That comes off sudden a little unethical and monopolistic, doesn't it? A little. I won't coast, though. I'll work hard until I'm at the very apex. You know, I still don't really know what I want to do with my life, honestly. Especially since I'm, like, so simple and all that. You know, to the point where it's like, what is even the meaning of life? There is no meaning. We're, like, we're on this small, tiny-ass planet in a freaking solar system within a galaxy. We're not even close to the center of the galaxy, and there are billions of others. What freaking meaning is there? Kind of, you know, pessimistic and all that. But if anything, I have an interest in music. <laughs> but then it's just like, oh, go for that as an occupation or something like that. It's like, oh man, that won't go well. Probably, I don't know. Especially with me. But I want to make music, damn it. And I'll probably, like, I also have an interest in video games, obviously. But I also want to potentially maybe, you know, make video games. Or, you know, maybe animate or something. I have no idea. That's the thing. You have. Potential kind of roads, paths, wherever you can take, but you're just uncertain which one to take. And then people will just be like, hey, why don't you just pick and choose, and if that tail fails, go, go try one of the other ones. But it's, nah, wherever I'm rambling. When I have as much money as possible, so much that I'd be, it'd be like I won't know what to do with it. I'll move on to the next step, after sitting on it for a while, of course, like a fairy tale dragon. You want to be? Uh, Phil and Frobs. I'm gonna Google what the fuck that is. A second. Ah, I see. Well, that's that's decent. What what were you thinking? That I want to be a miser? Well, it's true. It is a part of the plan. Don't sell me short and stop there, though. You know, if I had a shit ton of money, I'd probably do the same thing. Not the miser thing. <laughs> I would, like... I'd probably just, like, if I had a lot of money, I wouldn't keep it all to myself. I'd probably just donate. Because, well, why would you need to have a shit ton of money, really? Well, you could do a lot with a shit ton of money, but, you know, loads of rich people tend to have so much money and they end up freaking doing drugs and having addictions and all that 
and their uh, life just kind of goes into a downward spiral from that point. So why keep that potential bomb of money where you just like got so much money that you could end up in a situation like that? I don't know. Shunei still looks uneasy, of course, even if she did seem to resolve her problem quickly. No one can get over their anxieties that fast. No one can solve their problems that easily. The important thing is, it looks as though she has her heart set on trying. It's still hard to tell whether that drive of hers comes from a good or a bad place. But she has something to hold on to now. I can generally believe that she does. I'm happy for her. At the same time, I feel a little cold. I'm the one who is behind. Now I'm the only one without a goal. Uh, like I said, I don't have a goal in life either, really. I just like, uh, like I said, just like, you got your interests, pursue them. Just like video games, animation, movies, maybe some other stuff. And just like, work on it and see where it goes and all that. But I'm just like, it all comes, for me, it all comes down to, I haven't got a fucking clue how to begin. It's just like, just, I don't know. That's the whole point, you know, not knowing where to begin. Derp derp, moving on to the final scene in this long round. Oh, 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 oh.